Chemistry video. I'm so glad you are here. Today, we are talking about hormonal imbalances in hair loss in Black women. And I'm going to share the five root causes. I want to start off with the causes or the issues, the challenges, and we're going to go into the solutions. Now, I will say this as well, okay? As a cosmetic chemist, I believe in science, I believe in research, I believe in chemistry obviously but i also see things from a holistic perspective as well so we're going to have like a balanced perspective here and i want you guys to take notes we're going to do a little bit of a deep dive here it's going to be a lot of meat in this video so get just on a drink get you some chip well no no don't get no chips get some fruit okay because that ties into this video as well anyway you guys know i was no time let's go ahead and get started so first of all what is a hormone okay so a hormone is a chemical substance that actually acts like a messenger in the body our glands produce hormones and these hormones travel to different parts of our bodies and they tell our cells and our organs what to do they pretty much help our cells and organs do their job right now if there is an imbalance if something is off right then what should be working properly tends to not work as well as it's supposed to. Now, with that being said, let's talk about the first root cause of hormonal hair loss or hormonal imbalance in the body that leads to hair loss. Okay, number one is going to be PCOS, which actually leads to higher levels of androgens within the body. And this actually elevates DHT within the body. And when you have an elevation of DHT, you then can experience miniaturization of the follicles, which actually shrink the follicles, leading to thinning or hair loss. And a lot of times you will see this towards like the crown of your hair or your hair line. You'll see a lot of excessive shedding, for example, accompanied with irregular periods, facial hair, and also acne. Unfortunately, this tends to be misdiagnosed, especially in black women. Okay, number two is going to be thyroid disorder. So for example, hypothyroidism. So basically what this does is it actually slows cellular turnover or cellular activity. So when you have slower cellular activity going on, that can then slow hair growth slowing that activity that takes place within the follicle leading to thinning of the hair not only thinning of the hair but also breakage and dryness as well now your hair may feel or look very limp you'll see more shedding in the shower and in some cases breakage like at the mid shaft of the hair some other symptoms may include cold intolerance fatigue and even weight changes number three is going to be insulin resistance now in this case we're talking about blood sugar and inflammation so when your cells stop responding to insulin this will then lead to blood sugar spikes within the body which can then lead to chronic inflammation now with this chronic inflammation this can then disrupt your active hair growth phase aka your antigen phase so where your hair may have been in a prolonged you know four or five year antigen phase of growing now is shorter now it may be just two years and in some cases with that inflammation, once again, it can strengthen the follicle leading to thinning and hair loss. Now, insulin resistance is often tied to belly fat, sugar cravings, and also fatigue after meals as well. And I also want to point out that insulin resistance can also fuel PCOS and also hormonal acne. Now the fourth hormonal imbalance is going to be chronic stress. Now we're talking about cortisol and halogen effluvium. When you're stressed out, your body produces more cortisol. So your cortisol hormone actually increases, which can then lead to pushing your hair growth into the shedding phase prematurely. Now, a lot of times this can happen two or three months after a stressful event. Also, I do want to point out that chronic stress can also affect your gut health, which will then affect your nutrient absorption and hormonal balance. Okay, the fifth and final hormonal imbalance before we get into the solutions is going to be menopause, okay? Now we're talking about estrogen. Now, here's the thing. Estrogen protects the hair growth cycle. Estrogen keeps our hair in that antigen phase, that active hair growth cycle. Now, if you are dealing with postpartum, for example, or menopause, your estrogen is going to drop and you're going to notice an increased amount of shedding. A lot of times it can happen gradual and a lot of times it can just happen almost instantaneously. In some cases, your texture may change, like your curl pattern may become more looser or your hair becomes more dry, more brittle. Those are all connected to lower amounts of estrogen within the body. So with all that being said, let's get into some solutions, okay? Now, one thing about me, I'm all about lab work, getting some blood work done, okay? If, if there's anything I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna get pricked to find out what's going on internally. So I have here a list of different lab tests I highly recommend checking out, asking your doctor to do for you. I'll also post them below in the description box. So I think that's going to be really the first step 
to figuring out what your body needs and what it could be lacking. The second thing I want to say is lifestyle changes. Now, I think adaptogens are great options to help lower chronic stress. Adaptogens could look like ashwagandha, it can be macro root. You can take these as supplements, especially as stress is a part of your daily life. And then also, can, um, what is it called? Lemon balm tea. That is a tea that actually helps to reduce stress as well. You can just drink it, add some honey and drink it. So that I highly recommend as well. The next thing I would say in regards to lifestyle changes is getting on a good omega-3 supplement. The one I recommend, I'll post it below, but omega-3 is going to be that anti-inflammatory catalyst for you to really help with knocking out this inflammation within your body. Of course, it's not just on the omega-3, but that is a great supplement I highly recommend. You can also get it from leafy greens and salmon, for example, but there's nothing wrong with taking an actual like, supplement as well. Also, lifestyle changes I recommend is moving your body. like doing some workout and it doesn't have to be like some hardcore cardio i mean even though that is good especially for your heart but going out to just walk go walking for like 20 minutes a day maybe do pilates maybe do some home workouts whatever you want to do okay but get your body moving that's going to be very very good for reducing stress it's also with your brain too and then the last thing for lifestyle changes a lot of people don't like and i don't like it either but it's so important is developing a low carb diet if possible when i say low carb i'm really referring to processed food fried food sugary drinks of uh, all of those things because these high carb diets pizza sugar sodas can actually cause inflammation within the body so be very mindful of your carb intake now as far as topical support goes for like what can you do and put on your hair and your scalp the first thing absolutely is going to be the hydrating herbal hair tea rinse the rinse that i created and basically it's an herbal rinse that is very anti-inflammatory it helps with follicle support it helps support hair growth reduce excessive shedding and also helps with the scalp microbiome as well so i highly recommend that that's what it looks like and the link will be below and also before i forget to help reduce dht rosemary and peppermint are going to be great for that which also happens to be in the hydrating herbal hair tea rinse so not only can you use it on your hair and your scalp you can also drink it as well for hair care support and also body support as well <laughs> all right co-friends we've enjoyed this video and learned something new once again i'll post all the links in the lab tests and additional information below in the description box and if you enjoyed this video please be sure to like this video and to stay in the loop for more curly chemistry videos hit that subscribe button and you'll be locked into the next curly chemistry video of course i have a question for you what is one thing in this video that has stood out to you maybe it's something that you didn't know before something you learned whatever it is comment below and i can't wait to see your responses for all things curly chemistry the hydrating herbal hair tea rinse that's up here i'll post that link below for you for my ebooks for one-on-one -on -one hair care coaching for one-on-one -on -one launch your own hair care line coaching i'll post all the links below for you as well in the description box all right i love you guys so much and i'll see you guys soon bye